like why, a funnel. Why you want to land on the on a ship in the ocean? Because um, in order to get to orbit, you, all that matters is your horizontal velocity. Your altitude is, doesn't, doesn't really matter. The force of gravity at, uh, say, uh, the sort of nominal um, boundary of space, 100 kilometers, is almost exactly the same as it is on the surface of the Earth. Um, it's, like if it's a few percent lower than, than the surface of the Earth. Um, so in, in order to go up and stay up, the only thing that matters is how fast are you going horizontal to the Earth's surface. So you have that outward radial acceleration, or think of it like maybe like a tether ball or something like that. It's really that outward acceleration is the thing that matters. Um, and so when the rocket is going to orbit, um, the only reason it's going up is to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere. Because at, at high velocity, the atmosphere is thick as molasses. Um, and so it goes up very briefly, but if you look at a long exposure of the, the rocket's uh, trajectory, you'll see it, it goes up, but immediately curves over, and starts going horizontal. Um, and so the, um, at, at, the, at the point at which the, uh, the, uh, the, at the point at which the stages separate, those two stages, um, the, the primary boost stage, which is the most expensive part of the rocket, the point at which that, st that staging occurs uh, can be um, as high as uh, Mach 10. But it's, it's, so it's going away from the launch site at 10 times the speed of sound. So in, in order to get back to the launch site, you would have to have enough uh, fuel and oxygen to reverse out that velocity and, and, and boost back all the way to the launch site. Um, and you just don't have, the physics of it don't really allow you to have that much. It's, it's not about saving money on fuel or anything, it's just physically impossible. Because another sort of thing about uh, if, you're, if you're in space is that there's nothing to react against. So, like whereas an aircraft can, can circle very easily because it's reacting against air, in vacuum there's nothing to react against. So the only way to go back the other direction is to apply just as much energy as it took you to go, it, if you want to go backwards, you have to apply just as much energy as it took you to go forwards. In fact, well, twice as much really, because you've got to zero it out and then you've got to... So you've yeah. got to land elsewhere. Yeah, so bottom line is this thing is zinging out to, zinging out to so, sea at super, at 10 times so faster than a bullet. At that point, it may well be over the ocean, because the ocean covers most of the... Oh, it's, it, it's actually, at the point of separation, it's not that far away. It's maybe 100 kilometers away from the, the launch site, but it is going like hell in the opposite, you know, away from the launch site. So the, the, the only way to really land it is to have it continue on that arc, that ballistic arc, and then land far out to sea on a ship that's, that's pre-positioned to a particular uh, latitude and longitude, very, very precise, to within about a meter. Um, and then the, the rocket will um, then go from vacuum through rarefied air at hypersonic velocity. Uh, um, and, and when, so when it's, when it's in vacuum, it has to, it, obviously you can't use aerosurfaces, you have to use um, nitrogen jets to control the um, the attitude and position, and then um, as it starts to encounter uh, the air, um, we use um, grid fins because grid fins uh, look like sort of like a waffle, um, but they work quite well across a wide regime from both very high velocity um, hypersonics through supersonic, transonic, and subsonic. Um, so it's hard to it's, it's hard to have aerosurfaces that work well across that entire regime. And then, uh, so once the air forces become high, it uses the, um, the four grid fins to, to sort of control its attitude. To land itself. Yeah, it's, it's, controlling, its, it's, it's controlling pitch, yaw, and roll with, with the grid fins. And, uh, and then once, and th those grid fins will then position it to where it's fairly close to the ship, and then it will light, in this case, three of the nine engines, to arrest the velocity and then drop to one engine for precision right before landing. Right. Okay. So, super so that was hard. A, but maybe a bit of a long explanation. Okay. But okay, <laughs> what we're going to get to is that's super fucking hard. There's a video. So why video. why is that important? Why has that this moment been important for you? Well, so in order to reuse the the boost stage, which is right. about seventy percent of the cost of the rocket. So that what, what cost is that? How much is that? Um. Well, I mean, it's sort of on the order of thirty to thirty-five million dollars. Right. So you want to save that? Yeah. I mean, it's like I try to. I tell my team, it's like imagine there was a pallet of cash that was 
plummeting through the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> and it was going to burn up and smash into tiny pieces. Would you try to save it? Right, right, right. Probably yes. Yes, okay.